Welcome to our Vault Shorts. These are shorter episodes highlighting programs and resources here in our Montana community. And today joining us on the Vault is Allison Corbin, the Executive Director of the Montana Economic Developers Association, also known as MEDA. The following is a Big Sky Economic Development production. It's Mars B. And Cavo. And this is The Vault at 201 North Broadway. A business podcast. Where we bring you entrepreneurs, small business owners, and community leaders of Montana. To share their stories, expertise, industry insights, and strategies. And we are sharing them all with you every single week. You don't want to miss this. Learn how to better start, manage, and grow your business. And your leadership style. Tangible takeaways to save you time and improve whatever it is that you're working on. You're listening to The Vault. Thank you to the Small Business Development Center for sponsoring The Vault at 201 North Broadway. The Small Business Development Center offers free personalized support from business plans to financial projections and beyond, empowering small businesses to thrive. Reach out to us at BigSkyEconomicDevelopment.org. Allison, welcome to The Vault. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you here to talk about Mita, which we'll just yeah. keep using so we don't have to say yes. Montana yes. Economic it's, Developers. It's quite a long, a long name. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I support that. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, your title, the executive director. Yeah, I think right. Was, yeah, we couldn't even begin to count syllables. <laughs> no, it's a lot. It's a lot. So let's just dive right in. Um, talking about Mita, when and why was Mita created? So Mita is now thirty-one years old. Wow. So very much past legal to drink, um, but it was really <laughs> created with um, economic development practitioners got together from around the state and said, hey, we need to, you know, share ideas and resources. And, and you know, we're all in all of these different sized communities trying to improve the economy of Montana and we could really benefit from getting together and collaborating on different things. Absolutely. And, and a lot of it in the beginning, which is still the heart of it is networking in that period of here connection. Mm-hmm. And then eventually it became a more formal association, but that is the origin of Mita. Of Mita 31 mm-hmm. years old. Wow. Yeah. What's That's- Mita's mission? Mita's mission is um, really to advance economic development throughout the state through connections, advocacy, and through education. Can you can you talk a little bit about those three pillars, for lack of better? Yeah, and how Mita. We love saying yeah. pillars. Pillars. I know. Buckets. This, p- pillars, buckets. <laughs> all Wonder, great. Yeah. Um, all right. So connection, I mean, that's really at the heart of that peer-to-peer learning because chances are if an economic developer in Billings is dealing with an issue, it's a similar issue um, in Missoula or it's on a different scale in a smaller community in the state. And so there's so much peer learning and peer expertise in that association. Some people have been in it for 20 plus years. Some people are brand new, but offer a really great new perspective, or maybe we're in the private sector and have a perspective on how to, how to do something differently. So that um, connection point is really critical. That's why we do conferences twice a year. That's why we want to bring people together on a consistent basis, even via Zoom so that they can learn from each other. So that's their first pillar bucket. Yeah, um, pillar bucket. Then we do advocacy. So that's looked different in different years, right? So that's just making sure we have the right landscape at the state level primarily to support economic development and to get programs available to economic developers to apply boots on the ground for their community. So many different economic development tools, infrastructure, and then we've even gotten to areas, you know, that are a little further away, like, you know, telecommunications, do we have internet, things like that. So there's so much that goes into economic development. So that's the advocacy side. And then we have our education portion. Sorry, I was remembering my buckets. I was like, (laughs) there's one more. I was Uh, like, I felt like we made you speak really fast and... Yeah, you're like (gasps) I do that too. (sighs) If there's a big sigh, I apologize. Um, There's also education, so that's just making sure we offer education to all of our members. Right now, we're doing a great partnership with Grow America. I took advantage Um, of said partnership. You did, and I'm so happy you did. So that's the National Association. Actually, they changed their name. So they're just called Grow America, Grow America now. now. They used to be called NDC. But they, that's basically, we like to bring access to national and international level um, education and training to the membership mm-hmm. because sometimes it's hard to hard to have the money to get out there. Training is really expensive and we can be that resource for them. 
And that one saved like a ton of money because weren't you paying like... Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, with Grow America, formerly NDC, yeah. National Development Council. The The series that I did was the Economic Development Finance Professional, which is four courses that you have to take. And each course is 17 five like 1750 i think it's nearly two thousand dollars yeah and so with the benefit that we got through mita i paid 125 for my last one and saved 1575 yeah which was crazy and so that was a big partnership with the montana department of commerce they helped to do that for mita's members and so if you're a mita member and you're listening please take advantage of that absolutely because it's a huge savings and i would say even if you aren't specifically focus on finance within your shop of economic development, it's, there's benefit to taking those courses. The content is really great. I mean, it teaches you a lot of great things. And so um, I learned a lot about tax credits and historical tax credits and like all the different things. Uh, so if that is a part of your world, there's classes on that. I also learned about business finance. There's classes on that and real estate and all the different things. So Right. So you talked a little bit, but I I think it's worth mentioning because it seems like it's in such a better, healthier place. But Mita has kind of went through different versions over the years. But talking a little bit for those that aren't as familiar with the statewide organization of how it's structured and organized and and how it functions. So Mita is basically over 200 members throughout the state of Montana. Primarily, our membership is kind of in a couple different buckets. Back to those buckets. <laughs> so the first is economic development organizations. That's like Big Sky Economic Development. And those are organizations that are delivering economic development services in their communities. And those can also be certified regional development corporations. It can be a, just an economic development organization. So there's a, a variety of formats or ways that organizations are structured to serve their community like Big Sky Economic Development does. So we've got those. Um, Then we just have individuals that want to join because they do work adjacent to economic development. Maybe they're in infrastructure or do consulting to businesses in some way. And then there's a lot of partner organizations that maybe focus on childcare, um, like Zero to Five, or the Montana Community Foundation that does grants in, in communities or different engineering and architecture firms, because often we're working hand in hand to advance um, the economy in communities throughout the state. Yeah. And then the board structure and, and just your your function and structure, too, I think is interesting. Oh, yeah. So we have a number of board members that are required or statutory. So that we have statewide representation at any given moment so that all of the communities really have a seat at the table. And then we have some additional organizations that participate like the Small Business Administration. We've got the USDA. And a couple others, um, the EDA, federal mm-hmm. EDA, that serve in kind of ex officio roles. But it really, the goal of it, and it's kind of a big board, but the goal is really to make sure we have statewide representation from communities ranging from, you know, Billings down to, I don't know, I'll say Ekalaka just because you're right here yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I think there was somebody that did, yeah, represented that area, which I think is cool. So yeah. thinking about, you mentioned some fall conferences and other things. What do those usually entail? Yeah. So our conferences are open to anyone to start with because we do end up attracting a lot of people that aren't actually members of the organization. But we really like to take on topics that are impacting, really ends up topics that impact the business community that then economic developers step in to try and support or change or make easier, right? So workforce, infrastructure, uh, are always typical housing is going to be covered this time. So many the of those things. last conference that we were at in Red Lodge, mm-hmm. um, we heard about this new tech program and that was so interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to remember which one you're the talking about. Oh, tech, the, the tech hub. The yeah. tech hub. Oh yeah, absolutely. The tech hub is really going to be transformative in Montana. And we're going to hear more about that because that second round of grant funding just went in. And um, portions of the project were approved, so which is awesome. Yeah, that totally really cool is. to hear at the yeah. conference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we do like different things too, right? Like impact awards, just to recognize projects across the state. Yeah, for total disclosure, Marcel's a board member, so, <laughs> so <she's> like, <laughs> we also do other she's things. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, yes, we do these things. Um, so yeah, we always love to. So economic developers. I think by nature are shy about telling their story or, you know, it's, it's hard to like toot your own horn, right? Because so many of the successes are actually the business's success, but you played some sort of role in that that was really exciting or, you know, solved a problem. And so we really like to make our economic developers tell their story about impact impacts that they've had in the community and um, things that they 
are really are proud of. And so we do impact awards, which are really fun because it ends up being super cool success stories from around the state that we get to celebrate. And then we have awards, our legacy awards. And so Steve Arviscow, your very own, was a legacy award recipient last time, which is just for his long-term contribution to Mita. I think he was on the board for like a life, life sentence. 31 years. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he wasn't there that uh, long. I think he was there over 10 years uh, or I think he was 14 or something. something I can't yeah, remember. a long time. But he contributed a lot of, we'll just say blood, sweat, and tears to the organization. Um, and then we also have a couple other, we like to nominate a community member. So there's a community award. So if there's someone super cool in the community that's helped ec- economic development, we like that. And then we have an award named after one of our um, former economic developers who passed away from cancer, who was just, um, it's a, for a female economic developer that just is a uh, really gets things done. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Gets things done. Yeah. <laughs> I said it the PG yeah. way. <laughs> could it, if not, yeah. yeah. We have an explicit version for that too. <laughs> I could get a little E by my yeah. podcast. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Always right. wanted that. Yep. That's okay. So we do have some of those. Yeah. yeah. So, Just a few. Um, what would, why would somebody want to join? Primarily it's because they are in a field adjacent to what Mita does. And I think that there's so many awesome people trying to move the needle in communities in different ways. And so I think in the last couple of years, we've tried to open the door to people that are really more community development or see themselves as I'm solving more community-based problems. Big Sky Economic Development is kind of unique in that your community development lives within your organization. Many don't. Many have that function at the city or county or what have you. So opening the door to community development and then those issues that have become so hot, like child care, and housing, you know, we've started to see partners come in because it's kind of like a all hands on deck because it's such a big problem and it's going to take a lot of different people around the table to fix it. So I think that's how we've had more people kind of come to the table. Yeah, it, it feels like there's like a different energy and we're seeing a lot more of those like EDOs, but also other types of organizations, even architects, engineers, mm-hmm. things like that, which is cool to see. What do you think like on the horizon within the next year for Mita? like what are some things that that you see coming out maybe legislatively that you'll be leaning into Mm -hmm. in the advocacy or events not to miss events not to miss. So events not to miss is our fall conference in Haver. We always move our conference around, you know, North, South, East, West. We were in Red Lodge, like you mentioned, and we'll be in Haver. We haven't been up at the High Line since I think 2014. I've never been to Haver. Yep. So I'm excited that we're there. So those are always rotating and happening. When it comes to the legislative session, This will be an interesting session. And I think by any account, folks think it'll be an interesting year because you have things like Medicaid reauthorization and some other things that really kind of suck the air out of the room, I guess, because there's such big problems or such big issues that have to be resolved. But I think that Amita's role is really about maintaining programs at work, like tax increment financing, and then looking for opportunities, partner with other organizations who align with us and on tax increment financing or others. And so um, a lot of what we'll be doing is making sure that we continue to have tools and resources to make it easier to do business. Lots of, you have lots going on, lots of yeah. work. So what are some of your favorite parts? Because you've been involved with Mita for a really long time yeah. in different capacities. What are some of your like just personal favorite things about yeah. organizations like Mita? Yeah, I think the most fun aspect of Mita, A, it has really cool people in it. I don't know what about economic development, but it's people that really care about their community. So you get the group together and it's just a passionate group of extroverts, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> no, no, they do not need help, mo- like, uh, networking. Um, uh, There's no networking classes there no. because you've, you've already mastered it. You can't at that get point. people to be quiet to like <laughs> do a presentation. You're like, please guys. Um, so they're just, they're great networkers and that's what they do. They're connectors in their community. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what it lends itself to. I think my favorite part, so economic developers always, are looked to in communities to solve a lot of different problems. And you guys feel that here, you know, like we've got childcare and workforce and we've got um, this business issue and then there's a land issue and, oh, we need water here and pipes here or whatever. And so they're asked to wear all these different hats. And I think the most fun part of Mita is trying to give resource and information to make it easier, you know, because they're throughout the state, they get a little bit isolated in just where they are and where they mm-hmm. serve. So it's just trying to find ways, like, how do you make it easier for for them to do the awesome boots on the ground work that they do? And I think that it's that that's the coolest to me. And also that you can really say it's an association that there is someone serving every community in the state. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so like it, if you're, you can pick up the phone and be like, oh, you want to know what's happening in this, this community? You just just call this person, you know, and I think that that's got you pretty covered. powerful. Yeah. yeah, especially because rural areas, especially eastern Montana, I feel like they get kind of forgotten in many ways or people just have, don't connect with that area of the state. And I think it's neat to see to have those connections brought up. And I think Director Green's done a great job of kind of shining a light on the eastern part of the state because so many people think the state stops at Bozeman. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of real estate after a Bozeman. Lot, a and, lot of real estate. And a lot of opportunity <laughs> for the economy of Montana, too. Yeah. Knowing that there are rural and, and different sized cities, Billings is the biggest. What are some of those like tools, resources that are offered at a statewide level that maybe aren't always as tapped into as they could be? And I'm yeah. not saying that comes out of meetups, but yeah. just Spill other the things. beans. Spill the beans. Oh, man. I'll just do a shameless plug. Like all the media people, there's still so many trainings with NDC that people could take advantage of. So yes. please, if you're listening and you're in media, even the intro course is awesome. Honestly, great. a media membership is worth the, yeah. still you're yeah. saving money. Yeah. <laughs> Tons of money. Absolutely. It's a great deal. There you go. It is. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think that when it comes to state resources, it's like, I think we get comfortable with whatever program we've used. And it's really funny because there are days, even yesterday on our conference committee, that a program got brought up. And I've been in economic development for a hot minute, right? Mm-hmm. Like 12, 13, a long time, 12 years. And there was a program I had never heard of. And it was a lending program. And so I think that there's always opportunity to better build that connection. And I feel like that's how you solve it is with peers saying, Hey, I used it for this person. You're like, Oh, I've never heard of it. Like, how did you use it? Because it feels like there's not enough time in the day to articulate all the ways in which you could support a business, but hearing from each other helps. And so I don't know if I can point to a specific one, because I think some people will use Montana board of investments a ton and do great. Mm -hmm. But sometimes projects aren't the right size or the right scale, or they're not creating enough jobs to go through the hoopla to make it work. Or, you know, they're doing the uh, meat poultry processing grant and it's hyper specific, right? But it's super effective. And they've like in the state, millions have been deployed toward that. So like, it just is kind of, it's hard because not all one size fits all. Yeah. It's like knowing, kind of like knowing people that know other things. Like we had DBE on recently Mm, Yeah, and I had no idea. I was like, oh, wow, they're everywhere, literally. So the one that I, or part of the state government that always like blows me away is Angie DeYoung and like the foreign trade people. and Export Montana. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, when I first like learned about it and I still am blown away by the things they can do for businesses to help them sell internationally. And that Angie and Katie- Are they like when they talk about like even businesses that you wouldn't think had like an international nexus or opportunity that way? It's like they help them just kick butt at it. So it's so cool. Yeah. To just give a quick roll down and then we'll have a short on Expert Montana at some point. Expert Montana is a program that's through the Montana Department of Commerce. And what they do is they help business owners that are that have products that they could potentially sell internationally. And so they set up different trips. So they've got like Australia and New Zealand coming up. They've got Abu Dhabi. They have another one in there. And they actually set up meetings with people that would buy that product and then go to those meetings because they have those connections with them already and kind of do more of a warm Mm -hmm. call versus Mm -hmm. like a cold call, right? And so it really makes huge differences. And then on top of that, they buy big booth space at conferences and allow businesses from Montana to come take a spot in that booth to be able to meet new individuals that could potentially carry their product. It is a really great benefit. So yes, sorry. Yes. No. Yeah, selfish plug tags for like, Montana. I think uh, Woods Power Grip has done it. I think mm-hmm. so cool. um, I didn't mark right lines. They uh, might have. I think so. I think they did do international stuff. So it's like businesses that you don't even know. And like they, yeah. because it's a product that's so specific that there's, you know, international opportunity. And I think there was a lot of opportunity driven by the war between Russia and Ukraine because so many things actually come from Russia Mm -hmm. that you don't think about. And Mm -hmm. it's like really disrupted some of those trade pieces. And so I know some United States companies have stepped in to fill gaps because of that issue, which is interesting. That's really cool. Well, Allison, are there other things, Mita, that you're like, you have to know, you have to learn about that we haven't asked you about yet? You know, I think what, and I think, you know, a lot of maybe the business community, I don't know exactly who all of your listeners are, but I think that, I encourage businesses, if you're a business owner and you're like, okay, what's this about? Find your economic developer in your community. There is somebody that does mm-hmm. economic development in some way and meet with them. Even if you don't have a business problem today, 
I think there's so much value because maybe there's a, maybe you finance something in a way that could be done better, you know, Mm -hmm. like especially interest rates right now, or maybe there's a problem you have that that economic developer is like, Oh, you should talk to bill. He had that same problem two years ago and could actually like help you get through that because economic developers are master connectors. And so if you're a business listening, I'd say connect with your economic developer and kind of take get coffee, like take an hour to explain what you do. And like that would hang in the back of their heads for a day when they're like, oh my gosh, I could connect these people and there's a business opportunity or what have you. So I think that's the main thing if you're a business owner. If you are in architecture or engineering or any of those spaces or anything that's kind of adjacent to economic development, I just say come connect with us at a conference. Like it's typically a really great networking event Mm -hmm, with like people from all over the state. I hope in entertaining sessions, um, (laughs) right. When you put on a conference, there's always nerves around that, but like some great topics that really are challenges throughout our state. So come plug in no pressure to be a member, but I think that it's a good gathering of people, especially if you want to have a better understanding of what's going on throughout the state of Montana. Yeah, I really like that in the first one too. It's like, I feel like economic developers can't help themselves from connecting you. And (laughs) even if you're like in a rural community, there's someone probably regionally that represents you, but like other people within the county or town know them. Yes. So And you never know, they typically are some of the first people to hear of new programs that are coming out. And they can't help themselves really. Yeah, knowing you is really good. They can't help themselves. And one of the, the coolest things that I didn't really realize is I went to a, a minnow tank in Wolf Point. Okay. And was a judge. And it gave me a whole new perspective being in economic development because like I've dealt with businesses here in the Billings area more mm-hmm. from being at Big Sky. But these people are like in some of the business plans are like I, there's 30 families in our community to serve. And it's like the just badass nature <laughs> of mm-hmm. rural entrepreneurs is just mind blowing. And so like I think that's that's super cool and like super cool to connect with, too. Yeah. And for them to have, like, for you to know about them, because you never know too, like no. what resource you might hear of that can maybe someday help them. Yeah. Too. And they connect with their economic developers and have all this opportunity happen. And they are like hundreds of miles apart, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like I can't even name the tiny town some of them are from. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Quincy does a great job up there. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> that whole great Northern does a great job yeah, up there. Do. So, well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing about Mita. Where can people find out more information, get connected? Yeah, Montana. So it's www.medamembers.org is our website. So Meta Members, M E D A. It looks members. great. It's kind of got a facelift. So Perfect. it's really easy to navigate. Yeah. I love yeah. social media, right? LinkedIn, Facebook. Yes, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. We're not on the gram. But if you are a member, you there's a newsletter too that you yeah, get, is which a, is really yes. informative. So we do a monthly newsletter. Have you been reading your newsletter, Kayla? I just got it, I think, the other day. <laughs> okay. I, was like, I, think I, I feel like we all read week, it right? and send it to each other, and it's like, we all got it. Okay, like, <laughs> I love that. we got it. it that's like, it's FYI. so relevant. Yeah. You just have to send it to each other. It's just great. There's good info. Well, there thanks, go. Allison, for being on. Thanks for having me, guys. It's thanks. been fun. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you are subscribed to The Vault at 201 North Broadway, wherever you podcast, including YouTube. Connect with us on Facebook at The Vault at 201 North Broadway and Instagram at The Vault underscore 201. Don't forget to visit us at thevault at 201.com and subscribe to our newsletter. We will see you next time. Bye. Thank you to Big Sky Economic Development for supporting The Vault at 201 North Broadway. Big Sky Economic Development provides leadership and resources for business creation, expansion, retention, new business recruitment, community development, and workforce development. Learn more at BigSkyEconomicDevelopment.org.